Uh, last week we started a, a message on Joshua, and I was going to I was going to share with you three points about Joshua. We just got through one one third of the message, and so saved the rest of it for today. And then I'm going to preach the next one next week. And so um, God shares. He downloads things into your heart, I mean, as you wait on him. And so today we're going to pick up on Joshua part two. And there are several things that I want to share with you concerning his life and um, things that, that we can pick up for our lives today. And last week when uh, I was sharing out of uh, Joshua, I was thinking of as being a dad, being a dad and being a leader in our households and, and uh, taking that that baton that's handed to us as fathers. Someday we'll hand those batons to our kids, you know, and so forth. And friends, leadership, what does it look like? Well, Joshua really uh, shows us what leadership is, especially one who is a godly leader. And how many know that it's imperative that we follow the Lord, especially these days, amen, and listen to him, listen to his word. And, and so that's, that's the man Joshua, he did that. So if, you're, uh, if you have your Bible with me today, turn to Joshua chapter 24. We're going to read verse 15 again today. And I uh, want to share with you our part two about Joshua. But before we look to the word, let's ask the Lord to bless this time. Our Father God, we thank you and praise you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And Father, we thank you for all the goodness that uh, you are and that you share. And Lord, we thank you that you are our great God that we serve you. And Lord, today, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, our hearts to receive. And Lord, may our lives reflect your word. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Well, Joshua twenty four fifteen says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors they serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. What a great pro proclamation to make every single day. You know, when we get up, we have a choice to make that we can either serve God or not. And I believe the best thing to do is to vocalize our faith and say, Lord, I'm serving you today no matter what. Just speak it out. Amen. I'm serving you no matter what. Well, we looked at, at uh, Joshua, and uh, last week I shared with you that there are three divisions of Joshua's life recorded in the Bible. And the first one is this, for, uh, just to refresh your memory, Joshua spent 40 years in Egypt as a slave. So he knew what it was like being in bondage. He lived that. The next 40 years after Egypt... He spent 40 years in the wilderness wanderings. He, he saw the miracles of God. He saw the manna that, that came and fed. He saw the, the quail that came and, and landed. And they were blessed. He saw God's provisions of water come out of rocks. He saw all this. He also saw a lot of rebellion in the camp and so forth. And he and Caleb are the only ones to come out of that generation who were still there. He was 110 years old at the time of Genesis, or out of Joshua chapter 24, 110 years old. Isn't that awesome? And here he's still kicking, amen? Well, uh, Joshua spent the last 30 years of his life in the promised land and uh, along with Caleb. And friends, here is where he gives this declaration. In this latter part of his life, he said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Now he declared that, uh, you know, publicly. In fact, you know, I believe that he, he lived that early on in his faith. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And by the way, how many know that when you serve the Lord, you know, God keeps your back. God has your back. When we do what God's word says, when we live according to the, the precepts of God's word and take his principles and apply it to our lives, friends, God takes care of you and me. I, be, I believe that 100%, that if we do what God's word says and obey it, then, friends, there's a blessing that comes. In fact, did you know that the book of Revelation has a blessing? It offers a blessing for all those who read this word and keep it and heed it. 
You and I are blessed when we read the Word of God. We're blessed when we live by what this Word says. And so today, I want to share with you part two about Joshua's life. And uh, just before we go into part two, let's just do a little bit of a rerun from last week, part one. We looked at the first point of this, that, and it was about his faith, the type of faith he had. It was a committed and a consistent faith. And what we learned from Joshua last week is that a committed and consistent faith always succeeds. A committed and consistent faith always succeeds. You and I cannot fail if we have a committed and consistent faith. And what do we mean by that? Well, Joshua committed himself to follow the Lord. And he was consistent. He didn't take it on one day and then forget about God the next. No, he was consistent in his walk with God. And we saw that, that uh, his committed and consistent faith acknowledged and exposed the threats that were around them. And this is what will happen. That when you and I are in a committed and consistent faith, we will be a lot easier, it, it will be a lot easier to recognize threats around us to our own faith, uh, spiritual life and our faith to, to protect our families and so forth. And what did he talk about? Well, he talked about don't serve the gods of your past uh, that your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates and the Amorites in whose land you're now living. You see, there were outside influences that was, they were trying to take away their faith. All right? And their walk with God. Friends, we need to be aware of all those threats to our own faith and not give a foothold to any of them, but to stand firm in who we follow. Right? And so here we are. Well, uh, the next thing we saw is that Joshua's early faith immediately set him apart. And when he was one of the 12 spies that went into the promised land, uh, he and Caleb were the only two that had faith in God's promises. And they said, well, God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. God said that he would give us the land, and I'm going to stand on that promise. And, you know, the other spies, they said, well, there are giants in the land. We can't do it. And here Joshua and Caleb, they ripped their garments, and they, they were just at this point of grieving over the unbelief. Friends, as a result, these two men are the only ones who got to go into the promised land. And was in that promised land because they hung on to God's promises that they, they walked. Amen? And now this old man, standing before the leaders of Israel, this old man who had arms on him that held a sword in his hand. I don't know if he was right-handed or left. It doesn't matter. But he had this big, these big old arms and he had this hand that gripped his sword. He was a warrior. And this man had, had a face written on it all the 110 years of his life and experience and every single wrinkle in his face always glorified God because he trusted him all the days of his life. I want to share with you part two right now and that's this one. Determined and directional faith always leads. Determined and directional faith always leads. This is what Joshua teaches us. This is the second thing he teaches us. And what do we mean by determined and directional faith? Friends, does your faith, is your faith determined? In other words, are you determining that this day you will follow God? That this day you will glorify Jesus? That this day you will listen to the Holy Spirit? You see, that's a determination that each of us need to make when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord. We need to be determined and, friends, directional. Our faith will lead us through paths of righteousness for his namesake, not our namesake. And everything we do, we do for the glory of God. Amen? It, the Bible says, whatever you do, do for the glory of the Lord. And so we are here to lift up Jesus. We're here to reflect the Lord's love. We're here to reflect uh, by being salt and light to this world who needs Jesus desperately. Amen. And so here we see that this man uh, had determined and directional faith. And here's what he, he um, shows us is that it always leads. So when we're walking in the things of God, our family sees as, as our men, you know, here Josh is, Joshua is leading his household. He's talking about his household, but he's also talking and challenging the nation. Men, rise up and serve God. Amen. I believe that there's a crisis going on in America today. It's a crisis of, of fatherhood. I don't know if, uh, if you've seen the news, 
But there is a crisis of fatherhood. Many children today don't know who their dads are. Many children today don't have a role model of what a father is to be in a household. In fact, fatherhood is often mocked. In our, in our uh, culture, uh, a dad is mocked. And, you know, you have your, uh, uh, who is that, the Simpson family and all these uh, other areas that are mocking fathers and, and making dads look dumb. Well, friends, I want to tell you something that men of God need to rise up and live out their faith. Amen? Amen? Rise up, live out their faith. Rise up, O man of God. Lead your family in the things of God. Don't be ashamed. Be a leader. Leader. Amen? So, de uh, determine and directional faith. Two things about it today. I'm ju we're just going to park here today. I want to share with you what is determined and directional faith. What does it look like? First of all, it's grounded in prayer. Determined and directional faith is always grounded in prayer. Prayer is a communication with the living God. And I believe this, that when you and I draw near to God, He will draw near to us. We will feel His presence when we take time and pray, when we seek His face. Amen? We will feel His presence. Now, Joshua was a man of prayer. He knew how to pray and when to pray. Do you want to hear of, a, of an incident that happened that was very serious? In fact, it made God so angry that he responded. And the only way out of this was prayer. There was a man named Achan in the Bible. Anybody ever hear of Achan? Achan took some devoted things. He took them and he hid them in his tent. He was hiding them. One was a rope from Babylonia. We'll read about his story in a moment. But he took these things. When he was supposed to, along with all the Israelites, when they came into these places, they were supposed to take all the, all the, 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 spoil, the spoils of war, and they were to bring them to the house of the Lord. They were to bring them to the Lord and place them down. Now, there's a reason for that. This nation was not ready for those kinds of blessings yet. I have a, uh, a stat here I'd like to share with you. The percentage of lottery winner, winners who lost everything. Listen to this. According to Reader's Digest, January 4th, 2022, life after winning the lottery may not be glamorous forever. Whether they win $500 million or $1 million, about 70% of lotto winners lose or spend all that money in five years or less. They have nothing to show for it. The problem that the 70% who lost everything is simple. They couldn't handle the sudden wealth they were given. Such is the case with Achan. Such is the case with the Israelites here. God knew that they could not handle that, so he said, don't, don't take it for yourselves. You bring it here and leave it. You see, their inheritance was coming. Their inheritance was coming, but God knew what was best for them. You know what I'm saying, church? Doesn't that make sense? That he would make sense, that he would say, you know what, you're not ready for that yet. You know what, we live in a society where, uh, you know, it's, I heard about this in Financial Peace University, Dave Ramsey, uh, you know what we're saying. Um, our, a lot of people today, young people, they get married and they want the lifestyle that their parents and their grandparents have right now. And so what they do is they finance everything to try to achieve what took their parents and their grandparents 30 or more years to succeed. We live in a society that wants that instantly. And friends, what happens is, when that happens is you get this, this picture of uh, this, this debt that, that is hanging over folks to pay. Right now, right now, people are having to charge their gasoline, their groceries, People are, are having a tough time making it in these hard times. The value of a dollar shrinks every day. I have a $5 bill in my wallet. It's like having a buck. You know what I'm saying? Have you filled up your car lately? You know? And, and maybe I'm depressing you this morning. <laughs> Not trying to. But you know, these are tough times. And friends, we need a strategy. We need a strategy. And here's the thing. God's Word gives us a strategy for navigating. Now, Achan, the story about Achan is this. 
There's the story of this man named Achan that Joshua had to deal with. This man was tempted with sudden wealth. He saw an opportunity for riches. The only problem was the riches didn't belong to him. They belonged to the Lord. When God was dealing with the Israelites, he understood that they were not at the place to handle riches as they were just beginning to come into the land. For them, it would come to be a process that was defined by God's timing. And here's Joshua chapter 7, verses 1 to 9. This is what brought Joshua to his knees and prayer. But the Israelites acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, at, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Avan, to the east of Bethel, and told them, Go up and spy out the, the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the people will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not weary all the people, for only a few men are there. So about 3,000 men went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. Verse 7, And Joshua said, Ah, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring, us, bring this people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say now? that Israel has been routed by its enemies. The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and they, were, they will surround us and wipe us out, our name from the earth. From What then will you do for your own great name? Well, then God reveals what the problem is. You see, their very success depended upon obedience. And he said, here God later speaks and he says, Achan, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up from your prayer. You guys have sinned. You've taken the devoted things. And Joshua was, was told by the Lord what had happened. And so they had to go and confront this sin. Friends, the theft needed to be confronted early in Israel's history. Because when there's just a little bit of sin that's tolerated, it can ruin the entire nation. And sins that act upon sin, upon sin, upon sin, when they accumulate, the whole nation suffers. I believe that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. We should not tolerate things that are evil. We should not tolerate things that God doesn't want in our households. And I'm not talking legalism here. I'm talking obedience. True freedom in Jesus Christ is found when we obey His Word. That's where the true freedom is. And Achan, he represents what uh, this, this tendency of, I want to get rich, I don't want anyone to know, so he hid this in his tent, and there it is. So anyway, he was confronted. He had to, uh, they, brought, they went and they found the stuff in his tent underneath a rug or something, he had buried it, he had hidden it, and he was called into account. So Achan became greedy, and his greed threatened the whole survival of the entire nation. Well, Achan's greed cost him everything. And here's what sin does. If we allow sin in our lives, sin will always cost us more than we ever wanted to spend. Sin will always keep us longer than we ever intended to stay. And sin will destroy everything we have because the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ when we repent of our sin, when we turn from it. Amen? Well, here's Achan. His greed cost him everything. It brought harm to the community. It had no eternal value. It cost him his inheritance. It cost him his family. He lost the fulfillment of his purpose. 
And finally it cost him his life. Wages, the wages of sin is death. And here, the only way to counter this was through prayer. The only way to hear from God in a time of, of judgment was to get on the knees before the Lord and pour out your heart, just like Joshua did here. Friends, if you ever find yourself in a situation that, that needs immediate prayer, pray. Pray. I believe that this is what directional uh, faith does. It does this. It drops to our knees in prayer. Directional faith will go to the Lord first in every situation, everything that we encounter that we need to pray about. We get on our faces before God. Charles Spurgeon, he said this about secret sins. You say that you can handle your secret sins, that no one is hurt by them. But you may, you, but you may as well ask the lion to let you put your head in its mouth. You cannot regulate his jaws, neither can you regulate sin. Once done, you cannot tell when you will be destroyed. You may put your head in and out a great many times, but one of these days it will be a costly venture. Well, his faith, Joshua's faith, was grounded in prayer. Directional and this, this type of faith that brought direction not only to himself, but he was showing the nation we need to seek God. And notice that others came and dropped on their faces and put dust on themselves. Dust, by the way, here is a way of repenting, of showing repentance. And so he was influential in getting the, the leaders to drop down and, and go to the throne of God. Go and pray before the Ark of the Covenant there. Well, the next thing about Joshua is that as a man of prayer, Joshua heard from the Lord. Do you ever expect to hear from God when you pray? Amen? You, don't you want to hear from the Lord? Don't you want to hear His voice? I guarantee that when you and I take time we will entertain His presence. The presence of God, when He shows up, He can show up in places that just blow your mind. He's there. And when you and I include Him in our day, He comes. He comes where He's invited. As a man of prayer, Joshua heard from the Lord. And I mentioned this, and I'm going to read this, this passage out of uh, Joshua 7, 10 through 12. Here's the Lord's response. He said to him, Stand up. What are you doing on your face? Wow. Well, God, I was praying. You know, friends, there's a time to pray, but then there's a time to stand up. When the Lord tells you and I to stand up, we need to stand up. Because He wants to speak to us. Isn't that interesting how God doesn't leave Joshua on his face? He says, stand up. Standing up means I am listening God. You know, God tells the same thing to Job in Job chapter 38. He speaks to him out of the storm, it says in Job 38. Have you ever read that passage? It'll blow your mind. Job is, he's just, he's just burdened with all these things. And God finally speaks to Job in, through the storm. And he says, he goes, I like how the King James Version says it, gird your loins. And stand up. Because I have a few questions for you. And he says, where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Where were you? You weren't around, but I was. And God is saying in this that he has been around much longer than we know. We can't fathom it. It blows our minds. God, God is eternal. He has been around for eons. He is the beginning and the end and everything in between. And friends, this God who wants us to stand in His presence so that we can listen to Him. There's a time to be on our faces and pray and then there's a time to stand in His presence and invite Him to speak into our hearts. And here's what God said. He said, stand up. And He's, he's got this exclamation point. Stand up now. What are you doing on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. In other words, stop it. 
Stop seeking me because there is a sin that has occurred. You and I cannot expect the blessings to flow from God's hand if we're going to continue in sin. There's a time of, of repentance that we need to get right with God so that God will make things right with us. When we stop our sin and we, we confess it, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? And He touches us and makes us new. Well, Israel, here God re reveals uh, Achan's sin. And he says, Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things and they have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. So there's a choice here. And this is, where there, this is where Joshua has come up with the fact that, look, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. This is based, this came from this incident here. This is just one of the many things that, that Joshua took and said, I'm going to be different. I'm choosing the Lord. In fact, you know what? The earth is the Lord's and everything therein. Everything belongs to God. How many know that? And you know your old car out there? That belongs to God. Amen? Amen? Aren't you thankful for that? Amen? And you know, your old, whatever it is, maybe it, it might be broken, but you know you keep fixing it because you like it. It belongs to the Lord. Your old dishwasher. I am the neighbor that was, was getting rid of their dishwasher and, and Kathy and I heard about this neighbor did... A remodel and and uh, Kathy and I were out there and and uh, our neighbor said, "Hey, do you want to buy my old dishwasher? We needed a new dishwasher." And we thought, "Sure." And so we, I think we spent. I, what would she want for it? Like thirty-five bucks? And it's like, what a blessing! It even had the stainless steel inside. And so I took the truck over there, picked it up, and brought it home. And you know, we still have that dishwasher. It got a new uh, latch, because that broke. <laughs> the motherboard fried, so I bought a new one and put in it. And you know what? It's working just fine. But I tell you something, one man's junk is another man's treasure. Have you ever heard that? And I'm kind of a cheapskate, you know? I find great joy in, in taking old things and, and bringing them back to life and using them again. But I always remember, God, you are so good to me. You're so good to me. And you know, when I load that dishwasher, yes, I load the dishwasher. <laughs> Kathy was out of town a couple weeks ago and I thought, I want her to come back to a clean kitchen. So I loaded the dishwasher and I look at that dishwasher and I, think, I say, thank you, Jesus. God, you're so good to us. Thank you, Lord. Hit the button. Lord, let it work. And it worked. <laughs> Friends, what do we get so tied up trying to have the best at any cost, trying to run ourselves ragged with worry. How are we going to survive? How are we going to do this? Now, friends, I'm not saying that you and I have to get by on junk in our life. But I'll tell you something. We have not because we ask not. And if you have a need, you need to bring it up to the Lord because the Lord watches out for you and me. That when you and I have a need, He will provide. And maybe... Maybe he wants to give you a new dishwasher. That's him. He can do whatever he wants. But I tell you what, God is God. I'm not. So I'm going to rely on him. Because I know he handles it. And Achan failed to see that. Achan thought he had to take the shortcut and jip God out of God's blessings. Achan wasn't ready for a lot of what they were entering into. In fact, the whole nation wasn't ready. God is not being mean here by withholding blessings. What He's doing is He's training. He's training each of us, even when we read this, to be more reliant upon Him. That we might say, oh, it's by the work of my hands that I have this or that. No, it's by the blessing of the Almighty that you and I have it. God is so good. And Joshua teaches this. 
So Joshua was a man of prayer first and foremost. The, the next thing that we see, the Joshua's faith. These are the only two things I'm going to share with you today. The first thing is Joshua's faith was seen through his prayer. He knew how to pray and when to pray. And the second thing is this. Joshua's faith was two things. It was, it was both visible and vocal. It was visible and vocal. And so here's what we see. Joshua faced a huge task. When he came in to the, the crossing the Jordan, of course, Moses was gone. And God chose Joshua as the leader. Now, I don't know if he was a reluctant leader or what, but this was a huge task. The people saw Joshua's faith early. And this is why God chose him, is that he was a man of faith. He's a man of prayer. He's a man who didn't compromise in his walk with God. So he had this huge task that he had to face, and the people saw Joshua's faith, be, faith because he wasn't ashamed. He lived out what he believed. Friends, don't be afraid to live out what you believe. Don't be afraid of offending somebody with your faith. Don't be afraid of letting your light shine for Jesus. God will see you through. In fact, I believe that we need to let our light shine all the more today. Amen? I believe that people are waiting to hear about Jesus through us. Well, people heard Joshua's faith because Joshua wasn't silent. Josh, Joshua spoke out what he believed. And here's the thing. He started in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. That is, he's entering this new venture as a leader. God told him something. He gave him a couple things that he needed to hang on to. In fact, God challenged him. He said, be strong and very courageous. Before any of these things, before going across and uh, taking Jericho and I and all these places, God spoke to him and he said, you be strong and very courageous. You be strong and courageous. He kept repeating that to him. I'll share with you how he said this, but he kept those two things. Be strong and courageous. And he kept telling him this. Now how many know that when there's repetition, that's an important thing? And you might say, well, God repeats himself in the Bible. You know why he does that? Because it's important. And we need to pay attention to it. It needs to be repetition. In fact, it's repetition that we learn things. That if you were trying to remember things, remember in school when you had the flashcards for math? Do you remember uh, writing down important uh, facts you needed to know for the test? And you had these on, on little cards, four by six cards or whatever, and, and you'd flip them and go through them and you had the answers on the back? These are important things to hang on to for you. And you know, we... We passed those tests, didn't we? Do you know that I still have uh, this reoccurring dream that uh, I'm going to graduate from college and uh, it's this reoccurring dream, but I still have to, uh, to go to the finance office and pay something before I get my degree. And I wake up from that dream and it's like, wait a minute, I already paid and I got, I got the degree. That was just a dream. You ever have something like that and it's reoccurring? And it's like, why does that happen? Because that actually happened. It was Kathy and I and her parents. This was in 1988. And uh, I, I, we were given instructions at graduation and, and this notice came, you owe this amount of money and you have to pay this before you get uh, cleared for your degree. Whoa! Okay, so... <laughs> Kathy's dad drove me over to the registrar's office and I went in there and I paid the bill. And do you know that even though that's all paid, it still is a recurring dream to me. Isn't that weird? And, uh, you know, it still throws me off. <laughs> so this reoccurring thing, when it happens in the Bible, there's repetition, it means take hold of it. God knew that Joshua would need two things, strength and courage to be a leader. And God spoke to him the two very things that Joshua would need to do. And so the first time, 
Here, Joshua 1, verse 78. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let the book of this law depart from your mouth. Meditate it uh, day and night. Meditate on it so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Wow. You know, when you follow instructions, things work. Remember? Guys, do you remember putting together maybe those Christmas presents on Christmas Eve that your little ones were going to open up the next morning? I remember the very first gift that Kathy and I gave to our son was a little red, you know, those, those little uh, wagons. Radio flyer wagon. The old steel ones. That's the very first toy that this dad put together. And I remember putting it together. And I remember having leftover parts. It was a wagon for crying out loud. <laughs> and I'd go look at the instructions again. And it's like, oh, oh I did that backwards, you know? But our little boy had that wagon for years. And then the swing sets, they were the worst. You'd put those bad boys together and there were a lot of parts afterwards. And you know, so many parts left over, you didn't want the kid to go on it until you made sure it was safe. <laughs> but something happens when you follow instructions. It works. So it is with God's Word. That when you and I follow these precepts, when we do them, His Word works. We show Him that we trust Him. God, I'm going to do what you say. So that was the first thing. And the next thing, Joshua was told by the Lord over and over again. Here, uh, we saw 6 to 7, be strong and courageous. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. And then Joshua chapter 118, whoever rebels against your word and does not obey your words, whatever you may command them, will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. And then you go to 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And do you know that Joshua, I'll bet he was scared to death going into some of these places. It wasn't a cakewalk. These were frightening, heart-pounding times. He had to face the enemies. That God said, you go in there. If you want that promised land, you have to go in there. And it's like, wow. Oh Lord, help me to be strong and courageous. His heart was upon him. But you know what? You get to Joshua chapter 10, verse 25. And this is a key. Joshua said to them, who? The Israelites. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. And he goes into details. The point of this is this. That Joshua heard so from God that Joshua began to sound like the Lord himself. That Joshua had heard from the God so much that he started to speak the very words that God spoke to him. And this old man of 110 years of age he was reflecting what God spoke into his life. He was releasing what God spoke into his heart. He released everything that God gave him over his family and over his nation. Friends, when you and I start to sound, we're not God, but we can sound like the Lord by imitating him, by taking what he says to us and then speaking it out, and speaking it out over our families and blessing them. Amen? Speaking it out over our workplaces. Do you ever bless your workplace? Oh, Pastor, you don't know where I work. <laughs> Just walk in there. You be the light. You be the salt. You bless that place. Lord, may this place be blessed. Lord, I ask that you bless the owners. Lord, help me to do the best to my ability. I want to be a blessing today. I want to be... A blessing to this company today. Thank you for this job. Oh, Pastor, you don't know what kind of job I do, though. What do you know about that? Let me tell you what I know about that. I used to complain a lot about this type of work that I used to do. I used to deliver bottled water. 
Did you ever know that? First time I signed up to do that. I didn't know what I was going to deliver. We were hungry. Kathy, these were the lean years. And I was just I just needed a job. I didn't I had school loans, Kathy had school loans. We had school loans and we're trying to make it. We're newly married. And so I found this job and went in for an interview and I got the job. Wow. Isn't that great? It's because nobody else wanted it. That's why. <laughs> so my first day I showed up. Okay, so what am I delivering? I didn't even know what I was delivering. Now oh, come on, I'll show you. Go into the warehouse. There's these five gallon jugs of water on pallets, five stacked high. I think there were 30 of them on there. This is what you're going to deliver. How? You're going to pick them up and carry them in. Whoa. Okay. Well, I needed a job, so we did this. That first week, I had to put asper cream on my joints. I was so hurting. And I told God, Lord, I don't know how I can do this job. And you know what? The more I did that job, the more I complained. Poor Kathy. She quit asking me how, I, how the day went because it was, it was Groundhog Day every day. She quit asking. I don't blame her. One day, by the way, I, I, got, I got promoted. They gave me more water to, to deliver. <laughs> That means my truck went from a small box truck to now a, a larger truck that had air brakes. And it went, psh, sounded really fun. So we had more water to, to deliver. And then one guy went on vacation. And I got his job to do, which was even bigger. I was going to places like the state capitol to, to deliver pallets of water. And friends, I just remembered being in the truck and one day I was complaining to God. And I said, God, I, I wanted to be a preacher, but I guess you want me to be a delivery driver, which is not a problem, but God, I don't like this job. I need help. And I clearly heard him say to me, in me for your job. I know you've heard this before. I know that you've heard me talk about this was so key in my life. This is what did a transition for me. Because I started taking God as a challenge and I started to thank Him every day for that job. And you know my attitude changed? I think I came home happier to the house. I think things were a little bit lighter when I'd come in the door. My son would be at the window waiting for dad to come home. Two years old. I can still see him standing there with his blanket waiting for dad to come. In fact, one day even came by with the truck and he got to sit in the truck, take the wheel and turn it. Good memories. But one day, God spoke to me. And it was a time when I put an application to a church on the east side of St. Paul called Amazing Grace Assembly of God. And I sent an application with my resume. And the church called and said, we want you to come and preach. You see, the pastor had left the church and, and they were in a transition. And so Kathy and I went there Labor Day weekend in 1993. And I preached. Well, after, this, after the message, uh, we went and didn't hear from them for a few days and they called us back. Would you like to be considered as, as applicants? I said, sure. I, Kathy and I talked about it. We said, sure. And so we went back. And friends, they voted us in. That was 29 years ago. And I'll just say this. I don't think that would have happened if I didn't praise God for the water job. Because my, one of my last days at that company, I went in there and I told them, I said, our church, you know, I was bivocational, 
while we pastured and I still did the water route. And then one day in 1995, the church was able to put us on full time. And I remember sending in my uh, resignation to the company. And I thanked them for the job. And I tell you what, I look back on that job. And you know what makes it all worth it? What makes the memories flow that, that bring a smile to your face? When those memories can come because you had a grateful heart for what God was doing. You might not see God work right now in where you are. You might not see that, that God is working behind the scenes because, you know, things are a little tough or they're a little tight. Just start praising God. Just start saying, thank you, God, for providing for us. Thank you, Lord, for this bowl of stew that I've had for the last four days. They're called leftovers. But just keep giving God thanks. And don't develop the attitude that you and I are entitled, that we deserve everything. No. We are walking because God is a God of grace and mercy. And that He will move on our behalf when we humble ourselves and say, Lord, I need you. And this is the man, Joshua. This is the man, Joshua, who walked through his life in humility. That he was strong and courageous because God encouraged him to be. God didn't say to him, be cocky and arrogant, be cocky and arrogant. No, he said, be strong and courageous. Friends, This is the type of faith I want. I want faith like Joshua. I want faith that is determined and directional every day. I'm determined to live for God every day. I have direction in my life because Jesus is leading me through paths of righteousness for His name's sake. That's the difference. And that's the man Joshua. I'm sorry to bore you with the story of my delivery experiences. There were other jobs I had, yeah. But I tell you what, pastoring a church is not a job, it's a calling. I don't even call it a career, I call it a calling. It's the highest calling that I believe a man could ever get or a woman could ever get. And I tell you what, I am so blessed. Kathy is so blessed. We are so blessed to have such a wonderful church. And it's so good to, to share this word from my heart every week with you. And it's from my heart that I bring this message today to have a determined and directional faith just like Joshua because that's what makes a difference. And that's what will make a difference out there outside the walls of this building is directional and determined faith for Jesus. When people see that you follow Jesus, they want what you have. Do you know, for my second ending, I remember that when I started praising God for the, for the job of driving the water truck, that's when I got to pray for people on my stops. He actually opened the doors. And I remember going to a, a, let's see, a driver vehicle services place. The state runs them all over the, the state of Minnesota. And I walked into one bringing water in. And I remember witnessing to a lady who needed Jesus that day. And she accepted Jesus right at the DVM. That became holy ground. You see, when we start listening to God, when we start praising Him and start lifting Him up and saying, Oh, God, thank you. He opens the doors. I wrote this down on a little post-it note. I was walking one day and I was thinking about Joshua and all the things that he went through. All the different challenges that he saw. And I shared this with you last week, but I'm going to read it off the post-it note again. And here it is. If you stare at your failures, you will strain to see your successes. If you stare at your failures, you'll strain to see your successes. So that means you surrender your failures to God and leave them with God. And you move on ahead. Forgetting that which is behind, we press on toward the goal to win the prize. And that's how we can be strong and courageous. That is how we choose the Lord, that we choose to follow Him. 
Father God, we thank You and praise You for Your faithfulness. We thank You for examples for us that we can follow. We thank You for Joshua, his determined and directional faith. Lord, it always leads. Well, Lord, our families need leading. Our families need guidance. So we submit. We get on our faces before You and we want to be strong and courageous because we want to be the godly leaders that You have called us to be. Lord, help us to stand as leaders. Help us to stand in our companies where we work, our places where we hang out. Help us to be the salt and light by leading the way through our directional and determined faith. We pray this in Jesus' name to help us to make a difference wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen.